that matters. This is your forecast first from KARK4. Strong winds, lightning, and downpour. Mother Nature handing down a round of severe weather across the natural state this evening. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm joined now with meteorologist Hayden Nix. You've been watching the storm all yeah. night long, watching all of those warnings and watches roll in. Where do we stand right now and what can we expect going into the night? Well, right now we are looking at the northern half of the state having that highest potential for seeing a brief spin up. That is where we are closest to that circulation there. I do want to show you though, we have near Hector earlier this more or earlier this evening, uh, a tornado worn storm there and had some pretty dark looking clouds and uh, had a couple reports of uh, wall clouds and funnel clouds. You can see there's a lot of low level cloud cover there. I want to thank uh, Barb uh, Cohen for sending that in there. And also, this was from uh, Janice Rowlands from the same area. A lot of folks taking pictures of very low level cloud cover there. And at one point, I think we did have some circulation that we were watching very closely, but no reports, thank goodness, of any uh, confirmation of a tornado on the ground. No injuries and no damage reports from that. But nonetheless, we are not done with it just yet. I'm going to switch over to radar and you'll see that we've got still a good bit of activity ongoing. Again, most of it again across the northern half of the state as we were forecasting, but also notice that we've got a lot of activity still down towards central Arkansas here. And I'm going to walk you through real quick and give you an update on these warnings here. We do have a new warning that was issued for uh, portions of Faulkner and Pulaski County until 1030 p.m. That is for 60 mile per hour wind gust. Does include the northern half of the Little Rock Metro and Nickel Size Hill. Going up towards uh, North Arkansas, we've got a severe thunderstorm warning for another uh, 13 minutes for portions of Cleburne, Conway, Faulkner, Pope, and Van Buren. County. Moving off towards the east here, just ahead of that one, you've got another severe thunderstorm warning that includes all those counties I just mentioned, but adding to White County. Then just to the north here, you've got another severe thunderstorm warning that includes Cleburne, Independence, Ind Izzard, and Stone Counties until 1015. And then up towards the north here, Independence, Izzard, Sharp, and Stone County until 1030 p.m. All of these warnings, as I mentioned, all show and indicate a chance for these thunderstorms to produce 60 mile per hour wind gusts, all of which we're going to be watching very closely for you. Something we certainly are going to continue to monitor. We do have a tornado watch that's still in effect for another hour for extreme north central Arkansas, but just outside of that, I can't rule out maybe a brief spin up, but that's where the greatest concentration of that threat exists. But outside of that, that damaging wind threat is still possible. That's why that slight risk is still in effect from Little Rock north. We're there, but your forecast first shows that we still are looking at a chance for thunderstorms for tomorrow. We're not done with it just yet, and maybe a severe one out of that. So sit tight. We're going to continue to update you, but we have more news coming up in just a second. All right, Hayden, thanks so much. The Arkansas Storm Team has been on standby throughout the evening, ready to activate at a moment's notice to keep you and your family safe. Our meteorologists had to cut into programming earlier tonight as we track storms moving through Arkansas. Continue to follow us both on air right here and online for the latest weather updates. New tonight at 10 o'clock, one person is dead after their car flipped over into a creek in North Little Rock. Police say it's unclear when the car may have gone over, but it was spotted by a driver earlier this evening. The car was seen upside down near the intersection of Crystal Hill and Bridgeway Road. Police say there was only one person in the car at the time. We just believe that the vehicle uh, went just right past this intersection here, just straight off right past the intersection into the creek, what we believe. Police say this investigation is in its very early stages. They are working to identify the person in the car and notify their family. We, of course, will keep you updated. In North Arkansas, authorities are investigating after a teen was killed when the car she was riding in hit an oncoming semi. It happened before 9 Saturday night near Booth Creek Road in Sharp County. The victim, we're told, is 18-year-old Pradrina Hill. According to the accident report, the car crossed the center line and hit the semi truck. Officers say there were two people in the car also. They were hurt in that crash. And on to our other top story tonight. The deadly apartment fire in Lone Oak Saturday morning has claimed another victim. I was really hoping for her to come to my graduation. The mother of three was sent to a burn unit in Memphis and hours after her kids arrived, she passed away. Our own Rebecca Jeffrey spoke to the children she leaves behind and how they're handling this devastating news. Rebecca. Good evening, Steph. The answer is as best they can. The kids shared some memories with me and some things they're sad they she won't be around for, but now they're holding on tightly to the family they do have. 
The devastation caused by an early Saturday morning fire is slowly being picked up in the city of Lone Oak, but the news that three children lost their mother in that fire is still fresh. That's going to be a tough one. 38-year-old Christina Paul recently moved to the 5th Street Apartments with her husband. Early Saturday morning, a fire broke out in the complex. Her husband died at the scene. Christina was able to make it out with third-degree burns covering 85% of her body, according to her family. Well, I was shocked at first. It was like a scary moment for me. When Christina's ex-husband and his wife, Glinda, heard the news, they knew they needed to get their kids to her. We jumped in immediately and went straight to the hospital from there. 18-year-old Rebecca Diamond says when they got there, they could only see her mom's face. But she sat down next to her and started reading the New Testament to her. Reading the last bit of it, and that's when they came in and announced her that she had gone, was gone. Now as a senior in high school, preparing for an early graduation in December. I was really hoping for her to come to my graduation. She's planning for her mother's funeral. Losing her was like I had no one there. But sitting hand in hand with her siblings and stepmom, she knows she's not alone. The children are in their father's care. No funeral plans have been made yet. The cause of the fire is still under investigation. Other families were also displaced in this fire. The Lone Oak Police Department is taking donations for them. There's more information on our website. Steph. Rebecca, thank you. Little Rock Police investigating four separate shootings happening over the course of a few hours this morning. According to authorities, the shooting started at midnight and ended just before 9 a.m. They happened in different neighborhoods and are not believed to be connected. Detectives searched for a motive and the shooters in three of those cases. In one shooting, a man was arrested for shooting his stepbrother. Police say two victims were shot multiple times and have serious injuries. We talked with neighbors at the fourth shooting. He ran outside and I immediately called 911 as I was sitting there watching the dude shooting up that trailer right there, running. If you know anything about any of these shootings, you're asked to call police. For more information on the investigations, head over to our website, krk.com. You can click on this report. It's right there on the front page. A prominent Little Rock family is grieving tonight while also trying to help solve a crime. Arkansas mogul Ron Robinson's longtime Hillcrest home was ransacked and burglarized. That's according to his family. It happened around the time of his funeral on Friday. Little Rock police are investigating but have not confirmed how the suspect or suspects came into the house. Surveillance vid video is not yet available. Robinson's son says his father was extremely generous and they're doing everything possible to find who is responsible. Civil rights icon and United States Representative John Lewis was in Little Rock this evening. The Georgia congressman was at a rally in support of Clark Tucker. Tucker is running for Arkansas's second, second con congressional seat against Republican incumbent Congressman French Hill. Lewis spoke alongside Tucker to students, volunteers, and members of the community at Philander Smith College. It doesn't matter whether you're black or white, Latino, Asian American, or Native American. We must learn to live together as brothers and sisters. The second district seat represents seven central Arkansas counties, including Little Rock. Congressman French Hill released a statement today in response to Congressman Lewis visiting Arkansas. It says in part, despite our bipartisan work together, it is in no surprise that he supports my opponent in the upcoming election. Congressman Lewis and he both share very similar ideas for how to run the government, including increasing taxes and increasing the size and scope of the federal government. To read the full statement, head over to our website, krk.com. Still to come, what major renovation projects is drawing in crowds near and far, we'll explain. And later, Arkansas ranks second in the country when it comes to children and food insecurity. What one South Arkansas group is doing in hopes of changing that statistic.